This is an underrated Python feature that you need to learn about. Now, in order to see the value, let's just have a look at this quick example. So you can see that I have some functions send email that I'm bringing in from some type of utility library. Now this function has a few different parameters, some that you need to pass like to subject body, and then some optional parameters that are keywords like priority, retry, maybe some more. Now it makes sense that we might want to wrap this function call in some other functions to kind of denote what they're doing. For example, sending an urgent email, sending notifications, sending a marketing email, etc. But you see here that we're writing a lot of repetitive code because all of these functions that we're writing need to accept these mandatory positional arguments and there must be a better way. Well, there is, and that is by using the func tools partial. Now, this is something that allows you to create a partial function, something that accepts all of the mandatory parameters, but plugs in some of the ones that you'll always use. So check out how this works. What I can do is I can write partial, I can pass the name of the function that I wanna wrap, and then I can pass any of the parameters that I want to always pass when I use this partial function call. This means that when I use urgent email, which is really a function, it will always pass priority equal to high and retry equal to true. And then I'll be able to pass the mandatory positional arguments like the receiving email, the subject, and then the message or the body. Now the same thing works for notification email or marketing email. And the nice thing about this feature is that it eliminates me having to constantly write those same positional arguments over over and over again, it makes my code a lot easier to read and understand. I can now document exactly what these function calls will do without having to write another separate function and getting into those levels of nesting. So I know this might not be 100% clear. Let me show you a few more examples on why you should be using Funk Tools Partial. But first, I want to let you know that I just reopened my private mentorship program, DevLaunch. The first launch filled up almost instantly. We took 10 people. This launch will be very similar. So if you're looking for private one-on-one -on -one mentorship directly from me, then you can apply for the program in the link in the description. Bluntly, we can only accept so many people because I am just one person and you are going to have direct access to me. For example, you'll have my personal phone number and you'll be talking with me pretty much every single day. So if you do want that mentorship, if you're looking to really level up as a software engineer and you already know how to code and you have a bit of experience, this is designed for you. And again, you can apply from the link in the description. With that in mind, let's get back into it. So I've got a bit more of an advanced example for you. Now take a look at this function that I wrote called process log. You don't need to understand all of the logic, but you can see that it takes in five parameters here and only one of them is mandatory. Now, if we scroll down here, you can see how I'm using partial to really simplify the call to this function and split it into two distinct types of calls that I probably would do quite often. The first is one for processing error logs. So you can see that I'm using a partial call for process log. I'm passing in an error pattern, timestamp format, and severity threshold. Notice that I don't need to include all of the arguments here. So I haven't included the include metadata one, for example. I just included the ones that I always want to pass when I'm processing some type of error log. Then if I were to call this function, like you can see I do down here, all I need to do is pass the log line. And if I wanted to pass an additional argument or override one of these, I could. So I could still pass the timestamp format here and override the argument that exists here if I wanted to do that. Or I can pass any of the additional arguments that I don't have defined. So what is the one that we had here, the include metadata. Now the point is this makes it significantly simpler for me to deal with this function because I've written kind of a standardized way for calling it if I'm dealing with error logs. Now, same thing for an audit log. If we have an audit log, maybe we don't care about the error pattern. Maybe we don't have a severity threshold and that makes sense because it's just some type of log. So we have a timestamp format and we have include metadata and now I can call it again just using my log line. Now you don't need to do this, right? You don't have to use a partial. You could just write a function like we saw in that first example. But by using the partial, it makes it significantly easier to read. It allows us to really self-document exactly what's going on. And it will also include and keep all of the type hints for the original function. You saw that when I started writing here, my IDE knows that I have access to something like the timestamp format. It also knows that I have access to the include metadata. That's because partial keeps all of the type hints in the original function information, which if you wrap it with another function, it doesn't. And you would have to rewrite all of these arguments. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense, but let's move on to the next example. So here's one I think will really resonate with a lot of you. And this has to deal with calling an API. 
So you can see here that I have some partials I've created for running a get request and a post request. Now, if you've ever dealt with APIs before, you know that typically you have a lot of repetitive headers. You have things like authorization tokens. Maybe you just have information that you always want to include in the request. The most common is something like an authorization token. So in this case, what we can do is we can write some partial functions that always include these headers. So I've written a partial for self.get that wraps request.get, and I've written a partial called self.post that wraps request.post. Now in both of these, we simply pass the authorization token, and now you can see that if I wanted to use one of these, what I can do is use self.get, which is what I'm using in this function here, or I can simply call it on the client, so I can say something like client.post, and I don't need to deal with handling the authorization token. Token. So as long as I initialize it with the key here, then I can post to whatever endpoint that I want, and it will include all of those mandatory headers. Now, of course, we could include additional arguments here if we wanted, more headers, more parameters that go to get or go to post. You can see there is quite a few of them here, but the point is it really simplifies this operation and gives us kind of a very easy way to deal with the API calls. So moving on, I've got another example which is a little bit different, and this deals with classes. So sometimes you actually want to standardize the creation of a class, something like a class factory. You may have seen that before, but we can actually do that with partial functions. So notice here that I have this temperature class. And when I initialize temperature, I need to pass some value and I need to specify a unit, right? That unit might be C, it might be F, it can be whatever, right? Depending on how we've implemented the class. Now, what we can also do is we can write partials that use this initialization function. So all I have to do is say partial on the name of the class. This will kind of implicitly mean the init. And then I can pass any parameters that I want to standardize being passed to the initialization or the constructor. So in this case, I'm saying unit equals C, which means if I use Celsius, it's automatically going to pass unit equals C. Then same thing with Fahrenheit. If I use this, the Fahrenheit class constructor, whatever you want to call it, it's going to pass F as the unit. Okay, then we come down here. You can see that if I initialize temp using Celsius and then I do a conversion, it will automatically give me the Fahrenheit conversion because we were using Celsius. And then if I do Fahrenheit, it will give me the Celsius conversion. Of course, this code is fine to run, but I'll just leave it like this for now, just showing you that this is more flexible than simply using it on something like a function, and you can use it on class methods like the constructor of a class. And just by the way, I know that this is a simple example. I'm just trying to make sure you grasp the concept. Obviously, this makes more and more sense when you have more parameters that you need to pass. So if you had like seven more here, and they're always going to be the same when you're initializing something with Celsius or Fahrenheit, rather than constantly rewriting those, you simply use a partial, and now it's defined in one location. You can change it if you need to. And better yet, if you were to add an additional parameter here that wasn't one of the ones that you passed, you don't need to change anything in the partial. It still works. You just need to change the function call. Moving on, I have another more advanced example for us. So I have this create environment function. What it does is it creates a partial on config.load, which is some function coming from a utility library, and it defines some of the parameters that we need for initializing the development or production environment. Now notice that we're doing this out of a function, so we're kind of creating a function from this function call. We pass in the environment type, and then we return either this partial or this partial, depending on production or development. If we come down here, the way that I would use this is simply pass in the type of environment that we're looking for, either development or production. This will then create two partial functions that are give me access to them for dev config and prod config. And then I can call them as I see fit throughout my program. And all I have to do is pass something like a configuration file, uh, although I could really not pass anything if I don't want to. And then it will get initialized for me and create that environment. I'm just trying to give you a few different examples here so you can see where this would be useful. But notice that this code is very easy to understand. I don't have tons of different parameters everywhere here. And if I'm always going to be calling these environments with the same type of parameters, this makes sense to do, especially if I have something like maybe a different configuration file, depending on some kind of mode or something that I'm loading this in it. Anyways, let's go look at another example where we can kind of compare partials to using things like lambdas or function wrappers so you can see where they make sense. All right, so I've got another example here for you, mainly just to illustrate when you would use a partial and when you might not use it. So you can see that I have this API client class kind of just a bit more built out from what we saw before. Now notice that I have this make request method and it has a lot of different parameters, right? We have endpoint, method, headers, timeout, verify, and then any other keyword arguments that we might need to use. 
Okay, now as we scroll down here, you can see I have this function just to kind of demonstrate this. I initialize the client and then notice what I would need to do if I wanted to kind of create this partial implementation using something like a Lambda. So when I use the Lambda here, notice that I have to write the endpoint argument that I'm passing to this make request function. Now in this case, it's okay because we just have this one parameter that we're gonna be passing. But if we add multiple parameters like you know, endpoint two, right, keeps going, endpoint three, then I would need to write all of these in the Lambda. So separate this out, endpoint two, and point three, and you can see this starts to get messy very quickly. And if I decided to go and make a change to my make request function here and add another parameter, again, I would need to write that other parameter here in the Lambda and change it in multiple places. Now that's not ideal, and that makes it a little bit messy to use for this example, although it does work for kind of one parameter or no parameters. But if you go here to the partial, you'll see we don't have that same mistake. By simply using client.makeRequest as the first argument to our partial, now it doesn't matter what other arguments I add here into this function, they'll automatically get picked up by partial. So if I go here and I add endpoint two, and I make this a string, I would need to make a change in this Lambda function to now accommodate endpoint two, but I don't need to do that in the partial because these are just the ones that it's automatically going to send. It doesn't mean we can't send the other ones. Whereas with this type of Lambda function, if I wanted to pass the other endpoint two parameter, I would need to write that in and actually modify this line. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense, but partials are just more flexible, especially if a function could potentially change in the future. Whereas with the Lambda, you need to explicitly write out all of the different parameters. I understand this is a bit advanced, but hopefully this is making a bit of sense. Now, another thing is what happens when you're extending configurations and you're gonna wrap a partial on a partial. So in this case, you can see that if we wanted to add another thing, like the retry count, for example, I would need to write all of these arguments again endpoint, method, timeout, verify, headers, and then I add the retry count. So again, exact same thing as this code, except I wanted to add the retry count and I needed to write pretty much this exact same thing again. Whereas if I use a partial, I can simply wrap the other partial. So I can just say partial, get the request partial. Okay, so I just use this one right here and then I just add the retry count. And now I have, again, this partial that adds the retry count without adding all of these additional parameters because it's just using the ones from the first partial that I wrote. I know it's like partials inside of partials, but trying to show you how it gets flexible when you're kind of combining them together. Continuing here, another interesting advantage is what happens if you try to inspect some type of function. So if you use something like the Lambda, like we looked at before, and then you look at the name of that function, since it's technically an anonymous function, it's just gonna output Lambda. So if you're inspecting this in some type of debugger using a more advanced tool on your IDE, it doesn't really give you any information. Whereas if you're using the partial, you can actually get the name of the original function, which is make request. So it's a lot more useful if you are debugging. Now, another thing that's a pretty huge deal, especially in a larger project, is the type hints and IDE support. So when you use partial, this works better with type hints and the IDE autocomplete, as I kind of showed you before, and you don't need to manually write in the types. So have a look at this here. We have this process data function, and we wanna make some kind of partial function call for it. So first of all, we could just use the Lambda. If we do that, we can say Lambda data, and then we can say process data, and we can just pass the data with these kind of set parameters. However, if I go to process fast Lambda down here, and I try to make this function call, and I pass in some type of data, or I even just look at the function, it doesn't give me the type annotation. It says data is any because I would need to manually define what the type of this parameter is. I would actually have to take this type, specify it in the Lambda, if I wanted to get that autocomplete. Whereas if I change this and instead I use the partial, so I say, what is this? Uh, process fast partial. Now, if I look at the partial, it automatically gives me the type hint. It knows that I need to pass a dictionary with string and any. And actually it will tell me what the return type of this is as well, as long as it's defined on the original function. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but the point is that your type hints and kind of autocomplete and all of the typing that you had is maintained when you use the partial, whereas it's not if you use something like a function wrapper or a Lambda, which is what most people would do if they're not aware of this technique. Anyways, guys, that has been this video on partials in Python, an interesting feature that you should definitely know about, especially as you get more advanced. Last reminder, if you are interested in that mentorship program, you can apply from the link below, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.